Gary, just finally, you played at Hawthorne to start your career next to me in the reserves. I could have made you a better player if you had <laughs> stayed there, all right? Because <laughs> you haven't kicked on as well as I thought you might. <laughs> The year is 1989. Gary Ablett Sr. had just won a Norm Smith medal. He had kicked a grand final record, nine goals, in one of football's greatest individual performances. Yet, he had lost. The Geelong Football Club had lost in a grand final, in which Gary Ablett had kicked nine goals, and almost single-handedly brought a premiership into the hands of the Cats. What a story it would have been, winning a grand final, kicking nine goals against his former club. That's right, the team that Gary Ablett had once played for all those years ago in 1982. Had Gary never left, it's quite possible he'd be a multiple-time Premiership player for the Hawthorne Football Club, rather than a legend with no Premierships to his name. It's a story, a thought, and a hypothetical. What could have been if Gary Ablett Sr. had never left the Hawthorne Football Club in 1982? Let's break it down. Firstly, I just want to say welcome. This is my first ever video on this AFL channel. I'm excited. I'm keen to get into it. I need your support though. Obviously, some of you may know me from Nick Smith NBA, which is my NBA channel. So if you're from my NBA channel, these videos will just be very similar, but obviously AFL version. But obviously, I need to build up the channel now. I'm starting from ground zero. So I'd really appreciate if you guys could leave a like to show your support. Let's aim for the first video to hit like 500 likes. If you enjoy the AFL and you think that you'll enjoy the channel, Hit that subscribe button, it takes one second of your time and you obviously get notified whenever I upload a video and we're going to try and aim for once a week on this channel. But honestly, the biggest thing would just be sharing it around with your mates. If you have mates that you think will enjoy the AFL channel, let them know about it. And lastly, comment any ideas that you have down below. I've got a few ideas in mind, but if you guys have any AFL ideas that you think would make for good videos, just comment them down below and uh, yeah, basically that's it. Let's get it started. Hope you guys enjoy the channel and the video and... Yeah, let's get on with the video. Gary Ablett Sr. is regarded as one of the AFL's greatest of all time. A man that is praised by his teammates, peers, coaches and fans. And he has a case for being the greatest of all time. Had he won a premiership, it would no doubt have elevated his status even more. When describing Ablett, many use the words superstar, an icon, as tough as they come, a freak of nature. And he was a freak of nature, in every sense of the word a gifted footballer who could do everything on the field. His accomplishments speak for themselves. He's won an AFL MVP award in 1993. He was the captain of Victoria in 1995. He was a three-time Coleman medal winner, a four-time All-Australian in 1992 up until 1995. He won Geelong's Best and Fairest in 1984 and a Norm Smith medalist in 1989 in a losing grand final side. But the side he lost to in 1989 was almost the side that he played for. Had he stayed with the Hawthorne Football Club, history would have been rewritten. Would Gary Ablett Sr. have been a premiership player? If they keep Ablett, does that mean that Hawthorne never gets Jason Dunstall? Would Gary Ablett Jr. have been crowned a superstar for the Hawthorne Football Club and won premierships against the Geelong Football Club under the father-son rule? Many what-ifs can be discussed, no one knows the answers, but what we do know for certain is that AFL history looks a lot different. The names of Dermot Brereton, Robert Dibber Dominico and Jason Dunstall are regarded as Hawthorne legends, but little does the modern day AFL fan know that Gary Ablett Sr. was also on the same list as Dermot and Dipper, the man he almost killed on the football field. Watch half forward with the kick, intended for Ablett, up he comes, he crashes into the Ablett's behind me, telling me what he's going to do. I'm coming to get you, big fella. You know, and I can feel him, I can hear him. I did hear my rib break. And adrenaline takes you to places that people don't know they can get to. My body was changing. My body was inflating. But my voice is really high. Hey, kick it to me! You all right, Debra? Yeah, I'm fine, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, it's okay. I just thought it was open warfare. If you put your head over the ball, you caught what was coming. But we rewind back to 1982. A 21-year-old Gary Ablett had played a total of six games for the Hawthorne Football Club, kicking a total of 10 goals. Definitely not the type of player he'd go down to become, but nevertheless, the talent was there. But he lacked in areas such as work ethic, and his motivation levels were low for the game. He simply didn't want to be at Hawthorne. 
After just six games in the brown and gold, Ablett, who struggled with the city life, regularly missed training sessions, forcing his coach Alan Jeans to drop Ablett for his lack of commitment and eventually they let him walk. A young, 20-year-old Gary Ablett, with so much potential, had already shown glimpses of his future genius on the field, was now about to leave the game. Had the Hawthorne Football Club known what he'd become, they probably would have done everything in their power to keep him. But in the end, it was Geelong, who convinced Ablett to leave the Hawks and give football another shot in a rural city, where he felt more comfortable, and after his $60,000 transfer payout, Gary Ablett became a cat. But could you imagine Gary Ablett Sr. in those great Hawthorne sides of the 1980s? Hawthorne went on to win in 1983, the year that Gary Ablett left the club, in 1986, in 1988, in 1989, and in 1991, making the grand final eight years, seven of them straight, from 1983 until 1991. Just a dominant team for basically an entire decade, and all done without Gary Ablett on the team. Adding Gary to the glory years would have meant probably more premierships than just five. Or would it have? You see, whilst having Gary Ablett meant the Hawks would have been incredible, it also meant that the Hawks would not have got Jason Dunstall. Obviously you don't lose with either of them in your side, but at the same time, both players were quite different. Although forwards, Dunstall was a champion full forward, exactly what the Hawks needed at the time considering they already had Dermot Brereton up the ground playing the centre half forward position. Gary Ablett and Dermot already played together during the 1982 season, and whilst they were young players who hadn't yet emerged and become the superstars they eventually became, Ablett also played up the ground for most of his career until later on when he became a full forward and dominated the league. Having Ablett, who although was an incredible player, freakishly talented, and could have played at any position, it would have changed the dynamic of what Dermot and Dunstall became. In fact, had Ablett stayed, Dunstall probably would have played for another team. What's even more insane is that the AFL draft was first held in 1986, and Jason Dunstall entered the league in 1985, meaning that technically, the Hawks could have had Dermot, Dunstall, and Ablett all on the same team. In turn, the Hawks could have probably pushed Ablett more up the ground, where he would have played more on the wing since he played on the wing before becoming a permanent forward at Geelong. Playing on the wing might have even given Gary Ablett a Brownlow medal around his neck, and he probably has a Premiership medal, or two, or three, or even six for that matter, because the Hawthorne Football Club were already so stacked. It's really the one thing that Gary Ablett doesn't have on his resume, and so easily he could have had it had he just stayed with the Hawthorne Football Club in 1982. To think they could have had all this talent just shows how great the list management at the time truly was at the Hawthorne Football Club. In the 1980s, 1990s and even to this day, the Hawthorne Football Club has always been a talented recruiting team, but so has Geelong and they're the ones who ended up with Gary Ablett, one of the greatest players the AFL has ever seen. Ablett signed a one year contract for the 1984 season at Geelong and the rest is history. It's a valid question though, had Ablett stuck with the Hawthorne Football Club, would he have been the clear favourite for the greatest player in AFL history? The question remains. His son, Gary Ablett Jr., would have been a Hawthorne player under the father-son rule, and his career would have been altered, from one champion to another. The Ablets have reigned supreme on the AFL for decades, but it could have all been done in the brown and gold, had Ablett stayed in 1982. And that's basically it. Had Gary Ablett stayed with the Hawthorne Football Club in 1982, history would have been rewritten in the AFL. Can you imagine Gary Ablett Jr. playing for the Hawks? It just seems weird considering the Geelong Hawthorne rivalry that we had in the 2000-2010s. It would have been so cool to see Ablett play for Hawthorne, but at the same time, it also would just be weird. With that said though, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see AFL content every week, hit that subscribe button, it takes one second of your time, leave a like, it would really help my channel out, and obviously tell your mates around the channel if you think they'd enjoy the video, and yeah, I'll catch you guys next video. Peace.